everyone. It's a pleasure uh, to have you all uh, here. Uh, we will be here for a maximum of one hour. Uh, and we are together today online uh, for the launching of the African Center for Transnational Criminal Justice. Uh, the program is being displayed. Uh, let me just introduce myself. Uh, Biniam Dawit Mazmur is my name. Uh, I, am a, I am the Deputy Dean for Postgraduate and Research uh, at the Faculty uh, of Law. Uh, today, uh, I will play the role of a co-moderator. Uh, my co-moderator is Ms. Caroline Smart. Uh, she is a lecturer at the Faculty of Law. Uh, but there are a number of other reasons why uh, we have kindly invited her to join us as a co-moderator. Uh, um, I will just take us through uh, the first part and then uh, Ms. Caroline Smart will take us through uh, the other part. But the first one is to say welcome and to put uh, just a brief uh, comment on the ground rules. Uh, the session is being recorded, uh, that's one. The, the second is if you're not speaking, particularly participants, uh, please keep uh, your uh, microphone off uh, so that we avoid the interference and the noise uh, in, in the background. Uh, of course, the, the, the title is the launching of the African Center for Transnational Criminal Justice, but a number of the colleagues that we have uh, with us today uh, will be uh, giving us an opportunity to give us a context, uh, the importance of this uh, center and the history that it comes from, which I think is very important uh, and, and so forth, so forth. So from my side, let me just say uh, that uh, we will have uh, Professor Joseph Franz uh, who will give us the opening remarks, um, uh, followed by uh, remarks by the Dean of Law, Professor Jacques Deville. Uh, and subsequent to that, we will have uh, remarks by the acting director uh, of the African Center for Transnational Criminal Justice, uh, Professor John Mark. Uh, and then finally, the closing remarks, last but, last but not least, uh, will be provided by uh, Professor Vivian uh, Lavac. From my side, brief remarks. I am excited today uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, the first uh, reason uh, why I am excited uh, is because of my uh, close relationship with the subject matter. Uh, it's a very important uh, subject matter, uh, the issue of uh, transnational criminal justice. Uh, most of you that might not know, I work on uh, children's rights. Uh, I teach the course on uh, human rights. Uh, and there are a number of issues that are uh, human rights issues uh, that also tie very neatly with the, uh, with the issue of uh, transnational criminal justice, uh, but also that tie very neatly with, uh, with children's rights. Uh, there is a bit of a debate about uh, the importance and relevance of, uh, for example, international criminal law uh, in, uh, in contemporary uh, Africa uh, or even beyond uh, the borders of uh, uh, Africa. Uh, partly because of the fact that the International Crim Criminal Court uh, has significantly been politicized. Uh, whether African countries continue uh, to comply with international criminal law uh, and continue to cooperate uh, with the International Criminal Court uh, is something that we will have to continue to see. Uh, but whether or not international criminal law is here and it's here to stay, uh, that goes without saying. Uh, in fact, within the African Union, uh, there is a conversation to operationalize uh, an African branch uh, of the African Court of Justice uh, so that uh, victims uh, of uh, violations of international criminal law can actually gain uh, remedies within, within the African continent. Uh, so substantively speaking, it's a very sub important subject matter. It's a subject matter that is here to stay. Uh, and as I said, a number of other colleagues will say a word or two about it uh, in moving forward. Moving away from the substance part as deputy dean for postgraduate uh, and research, uh, I know uh, for a fact that the structured master's program that we have uh, within, within the faculty uh, uh, are very productive. Uh, they are pro productive in terms of attracting uh, very high caliber students. Uh, they are uh, very productive in terms of producing very good research, uh, be it in the form of a full thesis, a mini thesis, or a, or a research paper. They're also important uh, and productive in terms of being uh, able to meet uh, throughput rates that are provided. It's very rare that we have uh, students that are within the structured program that are actually applying for extension of studies. They usually finish within the two years, three years maximum uh, period. So from that point of view as well, uh, I'm, I'm very much uh, excited. 
So having made those very brief remarks, uh, I would like to call on uh, Professor Jose Franz, uh, who is the DVC uh, for Research and Innovation, uh, to give us the opening remarks. Professor Franz, uh, over to you, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Mesma. Um, to Prof. Lavac, Prof. Tavol, Prof. John Mark, to the moderators, Prof. Mesma and Ms. Smart colleagues and all present here this afternoon. Good afternoon. I want to just start by saying, um, Prof. Mesma, immediately after my opening remarks, I have to leave because I was in another meeting and the chair of council has just given me time just to come and do the opening and then I have to return to the meeting. So I will not be staying for the, for the whole session. But thank you so much to the law faculty for this opportunity to just say a few words at the launch of the center. This is truly an exciting day for the university. As a university, we are grounded in, we are grounding ourselves as a research-led teaching and learning university. And it is thus important that centers such as the African Center for Transnational Criminal Ju Justice contributes to the university in ensuring that knowledge creation and knowledge translation is driven from the university. As we are aware, and we will probably hear later on, that the core focus areas of the center is currently transnational organized crimes, international criminal law, and transitional justice. These are powerful words. And these requires us as a university to strongly engage on these topics. I know that this center was birthed out of a North-South collaboration more than a decade ago. And this highlights to us as an institution the importance of North-South collaborations in building capacity in the South and positioning us as the Southern partners to share and transfer knowledge that shares the perspective of the South. Partnerships for me between the North and the South researchers are powerful tools for studying problems of global change and for shaping development policies. And the law faculty is known to be able to contribute to this. Now, one of the core areas I mentioned is this transnational crime. And transnational crime is recognized as a pressing global problem. As we know, there's diminishing barriers of language, communication, information technology transfer, mobility. All of these impact this transnational character of crime. Trans and transnational crime presents intricate problems of victimization for vulnerable people. And one key component of this group of vulnerable people is women. It is thus my hope that through this center, we will be able to interrogate aspects such as gender-based violence. This is an area that has been highlighted as not only a national concern. If you, if you had listened to the, the State of the Nation address of the president, he highlighted gender-based violence as a national um, concern for South Africa. But this is also a global problem that is reflected under the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number five on gender equality and Sustainable Development Goal number 16 on peace, justice, and inclusive societies. It is thus my prayer and my hope that this center can do justice to contributing to addressing one of the wicked problems of our society that will highlight not only local relevance, but global impact. I thus want to take this opportunity to sincerely wish the law faculty and the center all of the best. I hope that we will be able to tap into the um, information and the, the expertise in the center that will help us as a university shape. And I, I am really um, passionate about this gender-based violence aspect that we will be able to tap into the research that comes out of this center that will not only influence policy here at UWC, but will influence policy in the national sector. I want to take this opportunity to once again say congratulations to everyone involved in making this center success and I want to wish you well for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, 
uh, Professor Franz, uh, first of all, I mean, uh, we say 50% uh, of uh, ability is availability. So thank you, first of all, for being <laughs> available to make uh, these important remarks. Uh, we would like to thank you for your uh, presence, but also uh, more importantly, for, for making the link, the under, underscoring the importance of the center uh, for the university, uh, uh, highlighting uh, the importance of a North-South collaboration, uh, which I think uh, is a very successful story to tell uh, that we're currently dealing with uh, here today, but also going into delving into the substance uh, and underscoring uh, the, the important uh, element of uh, violence against women. I mean, there are a number of instances where gender-based violence takes place in the context of uh, uh, in the context of war uh, uh, or as as crimes against humanity, uh, and I have no doubt that some of the research that will actually come out. Uh, from the work that would be done, uh, be it for the researchers that are attached to the center, but also the students that would be uh, continuing to conduct their research within this center uh, will relate to that uh, topic. But again, I would be remiss if I don't mention and congratulate you also for mentioning the SDGs, which is very much an issue that we are framing quite a lot of research around, not just only as the law faculty, but also as, as UWC. So thank you very much. Uh, we note that the, the apologies, we thank uh, the Chair of Council for the permission as well, uh, and have a good uh, afternoon. I now give the opportunity uh, to Professor Jacques Devieux, uh, our Dean uh, of Law. Uh, he has spent quite a lot of time to make sure that uh, this center becomes uh, successful. Uh, uh, and uh, I give the opportunity to uh, the Dean to make uh, uh, brief remarks. Uh, over to you, Professor Jacques Devieux. Thanks very much, Benjamin. Um, and thank you for, for this opportunity. So Professor Franz has already said quite a few things that I, that I wanted to say. Um, for example, the fact that this was the predecessor of the center was of course the South African German Center for Transnational Criminal Justice, um, which was a very successful center in terms of uh, postgraduate output and also research output. Um, over the 10 year period that it was funded by the DAID. And as most of you will know, that funding came to an end uh, at the end of 2018. So I would like at this point to give recognition to Professor Lau Fernandez, who was the UWC director of the center until December 2016. Um, and as some of you will know, he passed away sadly towards the end of last year. Uh, in the Festschrift that was published in his honor in 2016, he's referred to by his colleagues as lawyer, linguist, mensch, and as someone of honesty, humility, and compassion. And that is also how I remember uh, Lavo. So without funding and without a director uh, in 2019, the program couldn't continue. Uh, and this of course posed a challenge to the faculty in respect of its strategic objectives uh, which included growing our postgraduate numbers. Uh, but towards the end of 2019, Professor Iji was appointed as Associate Professor uh, in the Dean's Office to lead the re-establishment of the Centre. This re-establishment happened during the course of 2020, despite the pandemic, uh, with Council approval uh, in November 2020, as Benjamin mentioned. Now, for those who don't know, uh, the UWC process for establishing a center is quite arduous, having to go through a total of nine or 10 structures uh, the last time I counted. Somebody commented at some point that uh, it's easier to impeach the president of South Africa than to establish a center uh, at UWC, and I think uh, there might be some element of truth uh, to that. So Professor Iji uh, managed to not only establish, re-establish the center, but also restart the LLM program in the second semester uh, of 2020 with around 20 or 15 students from all over Africa who completed their coursework in the second semester of 2020. So I would like to, to say a big thank you to Professor Iji for all the hard work so far um, on the center. And I believe that under his leadership, the center will go from strength to strength. I'd also like to um, thank a few other people, uh, our deputy dean, Professor Mesmer, that you see on the screen uh, for his unwavering support in so many ways since 2018. A big thank you also to Professor Franz for the growth bursaries that made possible the relaunch of the LLM program 
and also for her and Professor Fielding for supporting the establishment of the center from the research side. A big thank you also Professor Lavac for her support through various committees um, and also to the rector for making uh, this possible. So the faculty now has four departments. It has one institute, the De La Ma Institute, uh, one Saatchi chair, Professor Staitler, and then also now four centers. And we hope that uh, these will become flagships for the faculty similar to the De La Ma Institute. The Transcriminal Justice Center will play an important role in boosting the faculty's postgraduate numbers and hopefully also have a good throughput of postgraduate students and also reach the faculty's research output. So to conclude, um, we would like for the Transnational Criminal Justice Center to become what was predicted for its predecessor in a 2011-2012 evaluation of the center. When it was said that the center has the potential of becoming the premier teaching and research site in the criminal justice field in the whole of Africa. We hope that it can reach those heights. Back to you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Deville, uh, for those remarks, uh, for the uh, thank you notes as well. Uh, but also for underscoring the fact that um, uh, it's not a, it, it, it's not an easy process that the establishment of uh, a center goes through uh, at our university. Uh, that also speaks to the kind of intellectual investment that actually goes into it from the different uh, structures within the university, but also uh, the potential collaboration, not just only within the faculty, uh, but actually outside of the faculty, uh, within the other, uh, the other faculty, but also beyond uh, UWC itself. Uh, and I'm sure that Professor E uh, will probably make some remarks about the composition of the board uh, and what, what he envisions uh, uh, in moving forward. But at this point in time, uh, I'm just going to hand over uh, to my good colleague, uh, Ms. Caroline Wilson. Uh, I've already briefly introduced her earlier. Uh, she's also very close to the subject matter. Uh, when the program actually started, uh, and if she wants, she can say a word or two before she hands over to the next speaker, uh, she was part of the first uh, cohort uh, of students uh, that were taken into the program, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, in 2009. Uh, part of the reason why I remember is also because of the fact that my own brother, my younger brother, uh, was also part of that uh, cohort. But without taking much time, uh, I hand over to my co-moderator, uh, Ms. Caroline Wilson. Over to you. Thank you, Bing Bingham. And on my part, I must say welcome and good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm also quite um, excited because of today. Um, like Benyam said, um, I'm an alumni of the center, um, well, formerly known as the South African. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to put my, okay, there we go. Uh, formerly known as the South African uh, German Center for Transnational Criminal Justice. So for me, it's basically, you know, exciting today because it's a historical day, not only for the first COVID vaccinations in the country, but also for the launch of the uh, center. And um, the center will, the reestablishment of the center will obviously bring new possibilities, both of academic and personal um, cooperation, collaboration and exchange. And like Benyam saying, um, said, that his um, brother and I were in the in the same group, and I was also one of the first recipients of the um, DAAD um, scholarship. Okay, so without further ado, ado I'm going to hand over to um, the acting director, um, Professor John Mark um, Ig. Um, he will basically just give some remarks with regard to the center. It's over to you, Professor. Good afternoon, colleagues, and um, thank you very much for taking our time to join us today um, at the launching of the African Center for Transnational Criminal Justice. Um, I, I don't want to uh, uh, reiterate everything that has been said, but first to begin by uh, giving my vote of thanks to uh, all our colleagues who have made it possible for us to to be able to assemble here today for uh, the launching of this center. So I, I'm very grateful to um, the Dean of the Faculty of Law, Professor Jacques Deville, and um, 
uh, Professor Bea Mesmo, who's on Flinchy support, had um, been very uh, instrumental to uh, the successful re-establishment of, of, uh, of this center. Um, I, I will just briefly touch on some of the uh, aspects mentioned by Professor uh, Frank in her opening remarks um, in respect of the thematic areas of, of this uh, center. Uh, the, the, uh, the three thematic areas of the center has it relates to our mission, uh, in international criminal law, transnational criminal, uh, uh, um, transitional justice and transnational organized crime. Now, these are three key areas in which Africa faces uh, enormous challenges uh, for, for, for many reasons. Uh, in international criminal law, for example, as Professor Mesmo uh, rightly pointed out, uh, has become a, a political weapon uh, according to, to some views. And Africa happens to be uh, at uh, the heart of uh, this contestation. So international criminal justice is relevant for Africa. Therefore, our mission, our statement partially states that we wish to contribute to advancing uh, the body of knowledge as far as uh, this uh, thematic uh, area is concerned. We uh, get to see that the, the, the struggle to end impunity is only just beginning when we discover that um, Dominic Ogwen of the Lord Resistance Army was convicted of war crimes and crimes against humanity just on the 4th of uh, February, 2021. And here is a man who was um, arrested, um, sorry, kidnapped when he was just nine years old by the Lord Resistance Army. So he, in effect, was a victim um, who was forced to take part in the commission of war crimes and crimes against humanity uh, over the course of much of his childhood and his adult life. And he now faces uh, um, this dilemma of being convicted for a crime when he was actually a victim. So it's one of the turning issues the ICC had to uh, uh, decide on how to deal with this moral dilemma of treating a victim uh, who also is a perpetrator, whether to be uh, dealt with as a victim or ha ha as a perpetrator, which would have uh, different consequences. So uh, that is just um, one instance. And coming closer home, we also find this contestation in the, uh, even within uh, our home here in South Africa, uh, the, 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 the efforts to pull out of uh, the International Criminal Court uh, seem to have been put on hold um, for the moment, but it's clear that it is still not uh, over on, on that front. So uh, international criminal justice is facing uh, um, uh, strong pushback from the African continent. And there is a need to um, interrogate uh, these issues, not only from an African perspective or national perspective, but also uh, in, in the uh, global uh, uh, intellectual uh, forum. So, so that Africa can make its contribution. And, and that is where we think our center can perhaps make uh, its own contribution. Uh, to just also touch lightly on the area of um, transitional justice, we, uh, Africa again is on the march in that regard. We see from Burundi to um, Sudan, uh, the, the transition from um, a violent past and authoritarian regimes to uh, uh, democracy and the rule of law and social justice is being put to, to the test. And um, again, uh, um, even 26, 27 years after South Africa's own experience, uh, we still see uh, that contestation uh, uh, re-emerging uh, with some scholars describing South Africa for uh, South Africa's experience as uh, um, a transition to violent democracy. So these are all uh, uh, issues that need uh, interrogation uh, to, to shed light and 
drive policy and, and legal reforms. Uh, and finally, we, we note on, on, on the transnational organized crime uh, element of the thematic area of our research center, we see the, 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 the changing times and the, the, the ever growing transnational threats as they are gradually eroding uh, um, natural barriers like the, the Sahara Desert with the gradual downward uh, movement of terrorist groups uh, we, who have now uh, moved into uh, effectively uh, uh, into the SADC region with the, 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 the emergence of uh, an ISIL affiliate in, in Mozambique and Tanzania. So um, there is no overemphasizing and the threats that confront Africa in this area. And we hope that our center will be able to, with the support of all our colleagues and, and uh, the university at large, uh, be able to contribute to, to, to the development of um, policy and law and capacity building and um, advocacy and outreach in, in this regard. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Ai. Um, we also need to say thank you to you for taking the, horn, the bull by the horns and making um, this happen, making this day happen and all the work and effort that you have put into um, this um, center. And um, obviously the, the reestablishment of the center will um, expand the pool of collaborators, researchers and publications, um, we believe, not only throughout Africa, but also in the beyond. Um, I must say with, with the previous um, center or the former um, center, we had out of the center was birth, the um, journal um, on anti-corruption law. And it's um, doing quite well. I, I'm almost certain that there's four, vo four volumes at the moment. And we've also seen a number of um, LLMs on the subject matter and also a number of um, PhDs. So we believe that the same is going to, to happen now. And also, you know, the buzzword is corruption. It's on every South African's um, lips, not only in South Africa, but internationally. So we are quite excited that we can um, re-look at um, all these laws again. Um, I see we have some time before the closing remarks. Um, if anyone has any burning questions, you, um, you are welcome to take the floor. I'll give it a minute or two if there are any burning questions, anything that you want Prof. Ie to um, clarify for you, you're welcome to do so. You can raise your hand. Um, anyone? I don't see any hands. I'm not so sure if any of the co-hosts can see any hands. Um, there's a comment from somebody from Umesh Power who says congratulate. Congratulations, colleagues, on revitalizing this important um, initiative. Um, so if there's no any burning questions, um, we can end it here. And I would love to introduce, um, I always say she is the professor with many hats, um, and that is the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic Professor Vivian Levac, who will present the closing remarks. Over to you, Prof. Thank you very much, uh, Caroline. I saw you this morning. Lovely to see you again this afternoon. Thank you very much, uh, Professor E and colleagues from uh, the African Center for Transnational Criminal Justice to the Dean and the Deputy Dean for and the group that planned this launch this afternoon for the invitation to make a few um, concluding remarks. As I was listening to the various inputs, and it was interesting to also note the historical background and the, the kind of contribution that the, that the predecessor of the center has made and acknowledging that. I thought of a couple of things um, 
that would probably be the, 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 the impact of the center in years to come. And I've divided them in about five areas of which the first one is that we are now poised to really make a huge contribution to the body of knowledge in the three thematic areas as Prof. E has um, outlined for us. But I think not only in relation to our own un our university, which is quite important, but in relation to the country and the continent, and I'll come back to that one, and globally. I also see, similar to how DOI has done it, there's a great possibility for the center to influence policy and to initiate legislation and to network with those kind of stakeholders and regulators and lawmakers um, to take it beyond the knowledge that we're accumulating and um, what we are developing in terms of our postgrad students, but that we also um, advance the engaged um, scholarship in this regard. And especially um, the point that was made earlier by a couple of the speakers about in a sense being locally, that's my third point, locally and globally engaged. And yeah, I include very big um, global and local issues so that one's not only relevant locally, but that you also become relevant globally and especially on the African continent. Um, one of the successes of the previous, um, of, of the, the DART Center on criminal, um, Transnational Criminal Justice was really about postgrad enrollment. And I think we've got a, a possibility here to not only increase the postgraduate enrollment, but to even build further on our throughput and the research output, which is already at the very high standard, coupled with the journal that Caroline uh, has just mentioned. So the possibility is to take this to scale. Um, if you don't make use of, of the center, then it would be an opportunity missed. And then finally, Um, I'll give you an example, and, but to then engage with the kind of issues that we'll have, uh, not only in the law faculty across departments and disciplines, but also within the institution. So let me give you two examples. And here yeah, I want to, for example, focus on um, somewhere in this, the, the fourth industrial re revolution or the, the impact of technology, and I'm putting my IT law and Pentec law uh, cap on here, um, should be featured in, in, in Maybe in your uh, when you're looking at, at, at um, organized crime, that would be one. I've done some work on um, mobile money and um, anti-money laundering. Um, and it's very interesting that you can look at it from a different, different lens than from a purely criminal justice lens. So there's other kinds of opportunities that um, if you just scan the landscape, see what is possible, not only within the faculty, but across then I think you would um, be giving the center uh, eventually an even better reputation as the previous one. So the possibility is there. Then I also think that um, besides the exciting possibilities that I've mentioned, um, Benyam knows he's also on my um, going to be engaging with the SDGs. Then we can do GBV and we can do uh, violence against children or trafficking, etc., all those kind of things. But I think the influence of migration and mobility is so important when one looks at it from a transnational criminal justice pers uh, perspective, that there's also synergies or possibility for, for collaborating with us as a group. So in conclusion, if one considers that um, every country's economic health becomes more and more dependent on other countries, and so therefore the understanding, uh, the importance of understanding transnational crime grows exponentially. We can't under, um, estimate this. And having a center with its own researchers and postgraduate students focusing on those three th uh, thematic areas, I think you can make a significant contribution. As I said, not only in, in advancing the body of knowledge in transnational criminal justice, but also developing very valuable insights into national and international policy and to global legal systems. 
Prof E, I like your focus and I like the fact that you start the name of the center with African Center for um, Transnational Criminal Justice. And I think in all the work that you do, don't forget you, the first word, African, because the possibilities of engaging Africa's problems and finding solutions, especially because we have, Caroline mentioned, such a huge level of, of corruption. And you, you all know how, how high up in the ranking in terms of corruption and anti-money laundering in South Africa is, just as an example. Um, so there are really um, big issues that we need to tackle from the center's perspective. And maybe I just want to, to conclude with a quote from one of my favorite previous presidents, and that's Kwame Nkrumah. And he said, it is clear that we must find an African solution to our problems, and that this can only be found in African unity. Divided, we are weak. United, Africa could become one of the greatest forces for good in the world. Thank you very much to um, Prof. Um, Mesmur and, and uh, Ms. Smart and everyone here this afternoon. Thank you, Prof. Um, Lebak, for your um, closing remarks. And I agree that the um, center will be key in drawing a pool of um, postgraduate um, students. Um, and also our wish is that the center will um, expand globally. And like you said, that Africa becomes this um, shining light to the world. Um, I'm gonna ask again, if there are any um, burning questions that we need to answer now. Um, I will give you a few minutes. Anybody wish to ask anything about it? Anything you need to know? Okay, so if not, then we will end it here. First of all, I need to thank all the presenters for their remarks. Um, and also I want to thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for taking time out to listen to the presentations. We trust that um, we will be able to expand throughout Africa and beyond. If there are any questions or you need to know anything about the center, I've actually um, posted the email address um, in the chat. So feel free to get in touch with us. Um, and yes, we say thank you very much to all of you.